4.3b, finding angles from trig ratios. Last time we found trig ratios when we were given the angle. This time we want to find the angles once we're given the trig ratios. We've actually done this before. When he gives you the trig ratio, you can use the inverse trig function to cancel out the trig function itself and solve for the angle. We could also, now that we know these special angles, if we're given the ratio and we recognize it as a special ratio, then we can go back and find the angle just from our memory. What if we had cos 300 degrees and we put that in our calculator? We would get 0 0.5. Then it should follow that when we do cos inverse of 0 0.5, we get 300 degrees. But when we actually try that, what do we get? 60 degrees. Why would that be? I thought it was 300 that gave us 0 0.5. Well, let's look at the unit circle here. Cos is the x value of the coordinate. And so you see that it can be 0 0.5 here at 60 degrees and down here at 300 degrees. So that's two places where this happens when we're in between 0 and 360 degrees. We need to be able to figure out what our calculator is giving us when we do inverse trig functions. So I've made some examples here we can try out to see if we can determine the pattern. So I've got sine of 270 degrees. If I put that in my calculator, it gives me negative 1. And I'll do the sine inverse of negative 1, and my calculator gives me negative 90. So I'll graph that so that I can visually see what's happening here. 270 looks like this, but my calculator gave me back negative 90. Let's try the next one. Sine of 150 gives me 0 0.5. And if I use the same trig function but inverse it, then I have the sine inverse of 0 0.5, and I don't get 150 back, I get 30 degrees. So that would look like this. Here's 150. And when I tried to get it back, I got 30 degrees. We'll pause the video here, finish the rest of these examples, and look for the pattern, what the calculator is programmed to give you. So what does your calculator always give you? looks like the closest angle to the positive x-axis favoring the positive side. Now that we know what our calculator is giving us, let's find theta to the nearest whole degree, given that it's greater than or equal to negative 360 degrees and less than or equal to 360 degrees, and sine theta equals 0 0.766. Now we can solve for theta by taking the sine inverse of both sides. And we get that theta to the nearest whole degree is 50 degrees. Now, we see that sine is positive. Now, when we say sine is positive, that means sine's ratio is positive. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking at the angle, we're looking at this ratio. It's on the other side of our equation. We see that it's positive, so the answer could be in the first or second quadrants, because sine represents the y value of our coordinate, so that could be positive in quadrant 1 and 2. So we'd have a reference angle of 50 in both of those quadrants, and then we could find our solutions. So given our positive side, theta can be greater than uh, zero but less than 360, that would be like this. Okay. There's one solution, is 50 degrees. And there's another solution, which is 180 minus 50. So that would be 130 degrees. Our domain restriction allows us to go from zero to negative 360 degrees. So if we go back this way, we see that we have another solution here and here. So that would be negative 180 minus 50 more. That would give us our negative 230. And 
this last one here, negative 360 plus 50 to get back to here, is negative 310. So given our domain restrictions, theta equals 50 degrees, 130 degrees, negative 230 degrees, and negative 310 degrees. So four solutions or four possibilities for theta. Example two, we want to find theta, again, to the nearest whole degree in this domain. We've got secant theta. Now, secant theta, we don't have an inverse secant theta on our calculator, so I want to get rid of that first. And we know that secant is 1 over cos. Now, I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides, because I don't want this cos in the denominator. And now I can take the inverse cos of both sides so that I can find theta. And I get that theta is 40 degrees. Now, 40 degrees is only our angle, our first angle, that's closest to the positive x-axis. And we look at our trig ratio here. And cos's trig ratio is positive. And that happens in quadrant one and quadrant four. So let's draw 40 degrees in quadrant one. And 40 degrees as a reference angle in quadrant four. And then we'll look at our domain and find all our solutions. So I'll use a different color. So first we'll do the positive angles. We can go from zero to 360 degrees. So that would be this way. When I draw that in there, I can see that I hit once, twice. Now the first one's easy, that's just for 40 degrees. The next one coming around here, going in the positive direction, is 360 minus 40, which is 320 degrees. Next, let's do the negative side. So I'll do that in a different color. We can go from zero backwards all the way to negative 360 degrees. And again, we see that we intersect our terminal arms here and here. So those are two more solutions. So every time you hit your terminal arm, you get a solution. So this one would be negative 40 degrees. And this one would be negative 320 degrees. Example three, our question is in radians. We have cos theta is equal to negative 0 0.5 and cos's ratio is negative. So that means that we're dealing with quadrant two and quadrant three. Now we also see that this is negative 0 0.5 and that's actually a value that was special and it came up when we did the unit circle. So thinking of our pattern here, we go one, two, three, one, two, three. And so it's actually just this first one right here that we want. And also in quadrant three, because cos is the x value of that coordinate there. And there. Uh, I'll just fill these other ones in so we can remember where I'm getting this from. So I could use the calculator, but I could just remember that this one is a special one that we've already memorized. And then we can go from 0 to 2 pi. And our two solutions are here and here. This one would be remember, 1 third, 2 thirds pi. And this one would be 3 thirds four-thirds pi. Example four, we want to find theta again in radians. If tan theta is equal to negative one over root three, so tan's ratio is negative, that means we're dealing with quadrant two 
and quadrant four. This is one of our special angles. So if I was to draw this, we'd be at pi over six as our reference angle here and here, or 30 degrees. But since the question's in radians, I'll try to keep everything in radians. Now our domain restriction lets us go from zero to two pi. That would be like this. So we see we have two solutions, one here and one here. So this one would be five pi over six. And the second one would be 11 pi over six. Example five, we want to find theta again, this time with a different restriction, but we're still in radians. We got cosecant equals negative two over root three. So first I'll get rid of cosecant. It's one over sine. Remember cosecant can't be cos, so it must be sine. And then we'll take the reciprocal of both sides. And when we see negative root three over two, we remember that that's a value we've seen on our unit circle or our special triangle. Now remember it, it's negative, so we're dealing with quadrant four and quadrant three. And the pattern goes like this, goes one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're looking for sine, which is the y value, so that would be this one right here. So that would be our first angle. And then we want this one on the other side, which also has the same y value. Our reference angle here then would be pi over three. And this reference angle would be pi over three. So that's a reference angle, it's not the answer. Now we can, for this question, go positive a half a rotation and negative a half a rotation. So from zero to pi, we have this. There are no solutions for this positive part here, or no positive solutions for theta. Going back from negative uh, zero to negative pi, we have two solutions, this one and this one. And so our two solutions are negative pi over three and negative 2 pi over 3. Example 6, we want to find theta again. This time we have no domain restriction, so we want to record our answer in general form. If we have tan, theta is equal to negative 1. That means our tan's ratio is negative, so we'll be dealing with quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Tan is negative 1 or positive 1 when the reference angle is 45 degrees, because that's where sine over cos it's going to be one or negative one. So we're at 45 degrees here in quadrant two and quadrant four. Now the issue here we have is that we can keep going forever. So we've got this is our first solution. And then we've got another solution here. And we've got a, another solution here. And we've got another solution here. And we can just keep going and also go in the negative direction as well. So our first angle is from here to here is three quarters pi. I'll write a few down. So the next one would be four quarters, five, six, seven quarters. And the next one, eight, nine, ten, eleven quarters. And if you write a few of them down, you should be able to see that we're adding pi each time. So stop that. We need to write this in general form because I, I just can't write them all. There's infinitely many. Now, usually we start for general form, we'll start at our smallest positive angle. But it really wouldn't be mathematically incorrect if we started at somewhere else because we're going to include them all. To get to the next one from 3 quarters pi, we need to add a pi n number of times where n is an integer. And because we make it an integer, that will enable us to get all the negative as well.
This was part of Trigonometry 3. Here's some questions. Give them a try. See if you know what you're doing.